Chapter 2 The Cow In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful Alif Lam Meem This is the book in which there is no doubt a guidance to those who fear Allah, who believe in the unseen and perform prayer, and spend out of what we have provided for them, and who believe in that which has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, and in that which was sent down before you, and they believe with certainty in the hereafter. They are on true guidance from their Lord, and they are the successful. Indeed, those who disbelieve, it is the same to them whether you warn them or do not warn them. They will not believe. Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing, and on their eyes there is a covering. Theirs will be a terrible punishment. And of mankind, there are some hypocrites who say, We believe in Allah in the last day, while in fact they do not believe. They lie to Allah and those who believe, but they only lie to themselves and do not realize. In their hearts is a disease of doubt and hypocrisy, and Allah has increased their disease. A painful torment is theirs because they used to tell lies. And when it is said to them, Do not make mischief on the earth, they say, we are only peacemakers. Indeed, they are the ones who make mischief, but they do not realize. And when it is said to them, Believe as the people have believed, they say, Shall we believe as the fools have believed? Indeed, they are the fools, but they do not know. And when they meet those who believe, they say, We believe. But when they are alone with their comrades, they say, Truly, we are with you, we were only joking. Allah mocks them, and increases them in their wrongdoings, so they wander blindly. These are they who have exchanged error for guidance, and so their trade was profitless, and they were not guided. Their likeness is as the resemblance of one who kindled a fire. Then, when it lit up everything around him, Allah took away their light and left them in darkness, so they could not see. They are deaf, dumb, and blind so they do not return to the right path. Or like a rainstorm from the sky, in which there is darkness, thunder, and lightning. They thrust their fingers in their ears to keep out the stunning thunderclap for fear of death. But Allah ever encompasses the disbelievers. The lightning almost snatches away their sight, and whenever it flashes, they walk through it, and when darkness covers them, they stand still. And if Allah willed, He could have taken away their hearing and their sight. Certainly, Allah has power over all things. O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those who were before you, so that you may become of those who fear Allah, who has made the earth a resting place for you and the sky as a canopy, and sent down rain from the sky and brought forth fruit as a provision for you. And do not set up rivals with Allah in worship, while you know full well that He alone has the right to be worshipped. And if you are in doubt concerning that which we have sent down to our slave Muhammad, then produce a chapter like it and call your witnesses besides Allah for help, if you are truthful. But if you do not do it, and you can never do it, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones prepared for the disbelievers and give glad tidings to those who believe and do righteous good deeds. For them will be gardens under which rivers flow. Every time they are provided with fruit, they will say, This is what we were provided with before, and they will be given things in resemblance, and they shall have purified companions, and will abide there forever. Indeed, Allah is not ashamed to place forth a parable, even that of a mosquito or smaller than it. For those who believe, they know that it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who disbelieve, they say, What did Allah intend by this parable? By it He misleads many, and many He guides. And in so doing, He misleads only those who are rebellious. Those who break Allah's covenant after approving it, and sever what Allah has ordered to be joined, and do mischief on earth, it is they who are the losers. How can you disbelieve in Allah, seeing that you were dead and He gave you life? Then He will give you death, then again will bring you to life, and then to Him you will return. It is He who created for you all that is on the earth. 
Then he rose over towards the heavens in a manner which suits his majesty, and made them seven, and he is the all-knower of everything. And remember when your Lord said to the angels, Verily, I am going to place mankind generations after generations on earth. They said, Will you place therein those who will make mischief there and shed blood, while we glorify you with praises and thanks and sanctify you? Allah said, I know that which you do not know. And he taught Adam all the names of everything, and he showed them to the angels and said, Tell me the names of these if you are truthful. The angel said, Glory be to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Indeed, it is you, the all-knower, the all-wise. Allah said, O Adam, inform them of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, Allah said, Did I not tell you that I know the unseen in the heavens and the earth? And I know what you reveal and what you conceal? And remember when we said to the angels, Bow down before Adam, and they bowed down, except Satan. He refused and was proud, and was one of those disobedient to Allah. And we said, O Adam, dwell with your wife in paradise, and both of you eat freely with pleasure and delight of the things there, wherever you will. But do not come near this tree, or you will both be of the wrongdoers. But Satan made them fall from paradise, and removed them from the state in which they were in. We said, Get down with hate between yourselves. On earth will be a dwelling place for you, and an enjoyment for a time. Then Adam received words from his Lord, and his Lord accepted his repentance. Indeed, he is the one who forgives, the most merciful. We said, Get down from this paradise. And whenever there comes to you guidance from me, and whoever follows my guidance, there shall be no fear on them, nor shall they grieve. But those who disbelieve and contradict our proofs, such are the dwellers of the fire, and they shall abide there for ever. O children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you, and fulfill my covenant with you, so that I fulfill your covenant with me, and fear none but me and believe in what I have sent down, confirming that which is with you, and do not be the first to disbelieve, and do not buy my verses for a meager price, and fear me and me alone. And do not mix truth with falsehood, nor conceal the truth while you know the truth, and establish prayer, and give charity, and bow down in worship with those who bow. Do you enjoin righteousness on the people, and you forget to practice it yourselves while you recite the Scriptures? Have you no sense? Seek help in patience and prayer, and truly it is hard, except for the humble, who are certain that they are going to meet their Lord, and that to Him they are going to return. O children of Israel, remember my favor which I granted you, and that I preferred you over all others of your time. And fear that day when no person shall avail another, nor will intercession be accepted from him, nor will compensation be taken from him, and nor will he be helped. And remember when we delivered you from Pharaoh's people, who were afflicting you with a horrible torment, killing your sons, and sparing your women, and in this there was a mighty trial from your Lord. And remember when we separated the sea for you, and saved you, and drowned Pharaoh's people, while you were looking at them, when the sea water covered them. And remember when we appointed for Moses forty nights, and in his absence you took the calf for worship, and you were wrongdoers. But after that we forgave you, so that you might be grateful. And remember when we gave Moses the Torah, and the commandments, so that you may be guided aright. And remember when Moses said to his people, O oh, my people, indeed you have wronged yourselves by worshipping the calf, so turn in repentance to your Creator, and kill the wrongdoers among you, that would be better for you with your Lord. Then he accepted your repentance. Truly, he is the one who accepts repentance, the most merciful. And remember when you said, O oh Moses, we shall never believe in you till we see Allah plainly. But you were seized with a thunderbolt while you were looking. Then we raised you up after your death, so that you might be grateful. 
and we shaded you with clouds, and sent down on you manna and quails, saying, Eat of the good lawful things we have provided for you. They did not wrong us, but they wronged themselves. And remember when we said, Enter this town Jerusalem, and eat bountifully there, with pleasure and delight, wherever you wish. And enter the gate bowing with humility, and say, Forgive us, and we shall forgive you your sins, and shall increase the reward for the doers of good. But those who did wrong changed the word from that which had been told to them for another. So we sent upon the wrongdoers a punishment from the heavens because of their rebelling against Allah's obedience. And remember when Moses asked for water for his people, we said, Strike the stone with your stick. Then twelve springs gushed forth there. Each tribe of people knew its own place for water. Eat and drink of that which Allah has provided, and do not act corruptly, making mischief on the earth. And remember when you said, O Moses, we cannot endure one kind of food, so invoke your Lord to bring forth for us what the earth grows, its herbs, its cucumbers, its garlic, its lentils, and its onions. He said, Would you exchange that which is better for that which is worse? Go down to any town, and you shall find what you want. And they were covered with humiliation and misery, and they drew on themselves the wrath of Allah. That was because they used to disbelieve in the proofs of Allah, and they killed the prophets wrongfully. They disobeyed, and used to transgress bounds. Indeed, those who believe, and those who are Jews, Christians, Sabians, and whoever believes in Allah in the last day, and does righteous good deeds, shall have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. And, O children of Israel, Remember when we took your covenant, and we raised Mount Sinai above you, saying, Hold fast to that which we have given you, and remember that which is there, so that you may become pious. But after that you turned away. Had it not been for the grace and mercy of Allah upon you, indeed you would have been among the losers. And indeed you knew those amongst you who transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath. We said to them, Be you monkeys, despised and rejected. So we made this punishment an example to their own and to succeeding generations, and a lesson to those who are pious. And remember when Moses said to his people, Indeed, Allah commands that you slaughter a cow. They said, Do you make fun of us? He said, I take Allah's refuge from being among the ignorant. They said, Call upon your Lord for us, that he may make plain to us what it is. Moses said, He says, Indeed, it is a cow neither too old nor too young, but is between the two conditions, so do what you are commanded. They said, Call upon your Lord for us to make plain to us its color. Moses said, He says, It is a yellow cow, bright in its color, pleasing to beholders. They said, Call upon your Lord for us to make plain to us what it is. Indeed to us all cows are alike, and surely if Allah wills we will be guided. Moses said, He says, It is a cow neither trained to till the soil, nor water the fields, and without blemish, having no other color except bright yellow. They said, Now you have brought the truth. So they slaughtered it, though they were near to not doing so. And remember when you killed a man, and fell into dispute among yourselves as to the crime. But Allah brought forth that which you were hiding. So we said, Strike the dead man with a part of the sacrifice cow. Thus Allah brings the dead to life, and shows you his proofs, so that you may understand. Then, after that, your hearts were hardened, and became as stones, or even worse in hardness. And indeed, there are stones out of which rivers gush forth, and there are some which split asunder, so that water flows from them, and some which fall in fear of Allah, and Allah is not unaware of what you do. Do you believers wish that they will believe in your religion in spite of the fact that a party of them used to hear the word of Allah, the Torah, and then used to change it knowingly after they understood it? And when they meet those who believe, they say, We believe. And when they meet one another in private, they say, Will you tell them what Allah has revealed to you, so that they may argue with you about it before your Lord? 
have you then no understanding? Do they not know that Allah knows what they conceal and what they reveal? And there are among them unlettered people who do not know the book, but they trust upon false desires, and they do nothing but guess. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands, and then say, This is from Allah, to purchase with it a little price. Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for that which they earn from it. And they say, The fire shall not touch us but for a few numbered days. Say, O Muhammad, have you taken a covenant from Allah, so that Allah will not break His covenant? Or is it that you attribute to Allah that which you do not know? Yes, whoever earns evil, and their sin has surrounded them, they are the dwellers of the fire. They will dwell there for ever. And those who believe and do righteous good deeds, they are dwellers of paradise. They will dwell there for ever. And remember when we took a covenant from the children of Israel, saying, Worship none but Allah alone, and be dutiful and good to parents, and to kindred, and to orphans and the poor, and speak good to people, enjoin righteousness and forbid evil, and establish prayer, and give charity. Then you turned away, except a few of you. You turned aside. And remember when we took your covenant, saying, Do not shed the blood of your people, nor turn out your people from their own dwellings. Then you ratified this, and you bore witness to it. After this, it is you who kill one another, and drive out a party of yourselves from their homes, assist their enemies against them in sin and transgression. And if they come to you as captives, you ransom them, although their expulsion was forbidden to you. So do you believe in a part of the Scripture, and reject the rest? Then what is the recompense of those who do so among you, except disgrace in the life of this world? And on the day of resurrection they shall be consigned to the most grievous torment. Allah is not unaware of what you do. They are those who have brought the life of this world at the price of the hereafter. Their torment shall not be lightened, nor shall they be helped. And indeed, we gave Moses the book, and a succession of messengers followed on. We gave Jesus, the son of Mary, clear signs, and supported him with Gabriel. So is it that whenever a messenger came to you with what you yourselves did not desire, you grew arrogant? Some you disbelieved, and some you killed. And they say, Our hearts do not hear or understand Allah's word. No, Allah has cursed them for their disbelief. So little is that which they believe. And when there came to them a book from Allah, confirming what was with them, and the gospel, although formerly they had invoked Allah in order to gain victory over those who disbelieved, when there came to them that which they recognized, they disbelieved in it. So let the curse of Allah be on the disbelievers. How miserable is that for which they have sold themselves, that they should disbelieve in that which Allah has revealed, grudging that Allah should reveal of His grace to whom He wills of His slaves. They have drawn on themselves wrath upon wrath. And for the disbelievers there is disgracing torment. And when it is said to them, Believe in what Allah has sent down, they say, We believe in what was sent down to us and they disbelieve in that which came after it, while it is the truth, confirming what is with them. Say, O Muhammad, why then have you killed the prophets of Allah before, if you were indeed believers? And indeed Moses came to you with clear proofs, yet you worshipped the calf after he left, and you were wrongdoers. And remember when we took your covenant, and we raised Mount Sinai above you, saying, Hold firmly to that which we have given you, and hear our word. They said, We have heard and disobeyed, and their hearts absorbed the worship of the calf because of their disbelief. Say, Evil indeed is that which your belief enjoins on you, if you are believers. Say to them, If the home of the hereafter with Allah is for you especially, and not for others of mankind, then long for death, if you are truthful. But they will never long for it, because of what their hands have done, and Allah is all aware of the wrongdoers. And indeed, you will find them the greediest of mankind for life, and even greedier than those who ascribe partners to Allah. Every one of them wishes that he could be given a life of a thousand years. 
but the grant of such life will not save him even a little from due punishment, and Allah is all seer of what they do. Say, O Muhammad, whoever is an enemy to Gabriel, let him die in his fury, for indeed he has brought this Quran down to your heart by Allah's permission, confirming what came before it, and bringing guidance and glad tidings for the believers. Whoever is an enemy to Allah, his angels, his messengers, the angels Gabriel and Michael, then indeed Allah is an enemy to the disbelievers. And we have sent down to you manifest proofs, and none disbelieve in them but the rebellious. Is it not the case that every time they make a covenant, some party among them throw it aside? No, the truth is that most of them do not believe. And when there came to them a messenger from Allah, confirming what was with them, a party of those who were given the scripture threw away the book of Allah behind their backs as if they did not know. They followed what the devils gave out falsely of magic in the lifetime of Solomon. Solomon did not disbelieve, but the devils disbelieved, teaching men magic and such things that came down at Babylon to the two angels Harut and Marut. But neither of these two angels taught anyone such things, till they had said, We are only for trial, so do not disbelieve by learning this magic from us. And from these angels people learned that, by which causes separation between a man and his wife, but they could not harm anyone except by Allah's leave. And they learned that which harms them and does not benefit them. And indeed, they knew that the buyers of magic would have no share in the hereafter, and how miserable was that for which they sold themselves, if they but knew. And if they had believed and guarded themselves from evil and kept their duty to Allah, far better would have been their reward from their Lord, if they but knew. O you who believe, do not say unclear things, but say, Make us understand and hear. And for the disbelievers there is a painful torment. Neither those who disbelieve among the people of the Scripture, nor the disbelievers, wish that there should be sent down to you any good from your Lord. But Allah chooses for His mercy whom He wills, and Allah is the owner of great bounty. Whatever a verse and revelation we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or one similar to it. Do you not know that Allah is able to do all things? Do you not know that it is Allah to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth? And besides Allah, you have neither any protector nor any helper. Or do you want to question Muhammad as Moses was questioned before? He who changes faith for disbelief. Indeed, he has gone astray from the right path. Many of the people of the Scripture wish they could turn you away to disbelief after you have believed, out of envy from themselves, even after the truth has become manifest to them. But forgive and overlook until Allah brings His command. Indeed, Allah is able to do all things. And perform prayer, and give charity, and whatever of good deeds Allah loves, send them forth for yourselves before you. You shall find them with Allah. Certainly Allah is all-seer of what you do. And they say, None shall enter paradise unless he be a Jew or a Christian. These are their own desires. Say, O Muhammad, produce your proof if you are truthful. Yes, but whoever submits themselves to Allah and is a doer of good, then his reward is with Allah. On such shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. The Jews said that the Christians follow nothing, and the Christians said that the Jews follow nothing, though they both recite the Scripture. Thus say those who have no knowledge, just as they say. Allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection about that which they have been differing over. And who is more unjust than those who forbid that Allah's name be glorified and mentioned much in Allah's mosques, and instead strive for their ruin? It was not fitting that such should enter them except in fear. For them there is disgrace in this world, and they will have a great torment in the hereafter. And to Allah belongs the east and the west. So wherever you turn yourselves or your faces, there is the face of Allah. Surely Allah is all-sufficient for His creatures' needs, all-knowing. And they say, 
Allah has begotten a son. Glory be to him. Exalted be he above all that they associate with him. No, to him belongs all that is in the heavens and on the earth, and all surrender with obedience to him, the originator of the heavens and the earth. When he decrees a matter, he only says to it, Be, and it is. And those who have no knowledge say, Why does Allah not speak to us face to face? Or why does a sign not come to us? So said the people before them with words of similar import. Their hearts are alike. We have made plain the signs for people who believe with certainty. Indeed, we have sent you, O Muhammad, with the truth of Islam, a bringer of glad tidings and a warner. And you will not be asked about the dwellers of the blazing fire. Never will the Jews or the Christians be pleased with you, O Muhammad, till you follow their religion. Say, Indeed, the guidance of Allah is the only guidance. And if you, O Muhammad, were to follow their desires after what you have received of knowledge, then you would have, against Allah, neither any guardian nor any helper. Those to whom we gave the book, the Torah, follow it as it should be followed. They are the ones that believe therein. And whoso disbelieves in it, those are they who are the losers. O children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you, and that I preferred you above all others of your time in the past. And fear that day when no person shall avail another, nor shall compensation be accepted from him, nor shall intercession be of use to him, nor shall he be helped. And remember when the Lord of Abraham tried him with certain commands which he fulfilled. Allah said to him, Indeed, I am going to make you a prophet of mankind. Abraham said, And of my offspring? Allah said, My covenant is not within the reach of the wrongdoers. And remember when we made the sacred house at Mecca, a place of resort for mankind and a place of safety and take the place of Abraham as a place of prayer. And we commanded Abraham and Ishmael that they should purify my house for those who are circumambulating it, or staying, or bowing, or prostrating themselves there in prayer. And remember when Abraham said, My Lord, make this city a place of security, and provide its people with fruit, such of them as believe in Allah in the last day. Allah answered, As for him who disbelieves, I shall leave him in contentment for a while. Then I shall compel him to the torment of the fire, and worst indeed is that destination. And remember when Abraham and his son Ishmael were raising the foundations of the house, saying, Our Lord, accept this service from us. Indeed, you are the all-hearer, the all-knower. Our Lord, Make us submissive to you, and make our offspring a nation submissive to you, and show us the ceremonies of pilgrimage, and accept our repentance. Truly, you are the one who accepts repentance, the most merciful. Our Lord, send amongst them a messenger of their own, who shall recite to them your verses, and instruct them in the book and knowledge, and sanctify them. Indeed, you are the Almighty, the All-Wise. And who turns away from the religion of Abraham, except him who fools himself? Truly, we choose him in this world, and indeed, in the hereafter, he will be among the righteous. When his Lord said to him, Submit, he said, I have submitted myself as a Muslim to the Lord of the worlds. And this was enjoined by Abraham upon his sons, and by Jacob, saying, O my sons! Allah has chosen for you the true religion, so do not die except in the faith of Islam. Or were you witnesses when death approached Jacob, when he said to his sons, What will you worship after me? They said, We shall worship your God, the God of your fathers, Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac, one God, and to him we submit. That was a nation that has passed away. They shall receive the reward of what they earned, and you of what you earn. And you will not be asked about what they used to do. And they say, Be Jews or Christians, then you will be guided. Say to them, O Muhammad, No, we only follow the religion of Abraham, Islam, and he was not of those who worshipped others along with Allah. 
Say, O Muslims, we believe in Allah, and that which has been sent down to us, and that which has been sent down to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and to the twelve sons of Jacob, and that which has been given to Moses, Jesus, and that which has been given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and to him we have submitted in Islam. So if they believe in the like of that which you believe in, then they are rightly guided. But if they turn away, then they are only in opposition. So Allah will suffice you against them, and He is the All-Hearer, the All-Knower. Our religion is the religion of Islam, and which religion can be better than Allah's? And we are His worshippers. Say, O Muhammad, do you dispute with us about Allah, even though He is our Lord and your Lord? We are to be rewarded for our deeds, and you for your deeds, and we are sincere to him in worship and obedience. Or do you say that Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve sons of Jacob were Jews or Christians? Say, do you know better, or does Allah? And who is more unjust than he who conceals the testimony he has heard from Allah? And Allah is not unaware of what you do. That was a nation that has passed away. They shall receive the reward of what they earned, and you of what you earn. And you will not be asked about what they used to do. The fools among the people will say, What has turned them from their prayer direction towards Jerusalem, to which they used to face in prayer? Say, O Muhammad, to Allah belongs both the east and the west. He guides whom he wills to a straight way. Thus, we have made you a just nation, that you be witnesses over mankind, and the messenger Muhammad be a witness over you. And we made the prayer direction towards Jerusalem, which you used to face, only to test those who followed the messenger Muhammad from those who would turn on their heels and disobey the messenger. Indeed, it was difficult except for those whom Allah guided, and Allah would never make your prayers be lost. Truly, Allah is full of kindness, the most merciful toward mankind. Indeed, O Muhammad, we have seen the turning of your face towards the heaven. Surely we shall turn you to a prayer direction that shall surely please you. So turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque at Mecca. And wherever your people are, turn your faces in prayer in that direction. Certainly the people who were given the scripture know well that this is the truth from their Lord, and Allah is not unaware of what they do. And even if you were to bring to the people of the scripture all the proofs, they would not follow your prayer direction, nor are you going to follow theirs, and they will not follow each other's prayer directions. Indeed, if you follow their desires after that which you have received of knowledge from Allah, then indeed you will be one of the wrongdoers. Those to whom we gave the scripture recognize it as they recognize their own sons. But indeed, a party of them conceal the truth while they know it. This is the truth from your Lord. So do not be one of those who doubt. For every nation there is a direction to which they face in their prayers. So hasten towards all that is good. Wherever you may be, Allah will bring you together on the day of resurrection. Truly, Allah is able to do all things. And from wherever you start forth for prayer, turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque at Mecca. This is indeed the truth from your Lord, and Allah is not unaware of what you do. And from wherever you start forth for prayer, turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque at Mecca. And wherever you are, turn your faces towards it when you pray, so that men may have no argument against you, except those of them that are wrongdoers. So do not fear them, but fear me, so that I may complete my blessings on you, and that you may be guided. Similarly, we have sent among you a messenger of your own, reciting to you our verses and sanctifying you, and teaching you the Koran and knowledge, and teaching you that which you did not know. Therefore, remember me, and I will remember you, and be grateful to me, and never be ungrateful to me. O you who believe, 
Seek help in patience and prayer. Truly, Allah is with the patient ones. And do not say of those who are killed in the way of Allah, they are dead. No, they are living, but you do not realize. And certainly, we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruit. But give glad tidings to the patient ones, who, when afflicted with calamity, say, Truly, to Allah we belong, and truly to Him we shall return. They are those on whom are the blessings from their Lord, and they are those who receive His mercy, and it is they who are the guided ones. Indeed, Safar and Marwa are the symbols of Allah. So it is not a sin on him who performs Hajj or Umrah of the house to perform the circuit between them. And whoever does good voluntarily, then indeed Allah is all recognizer, all knower. Indeed, those who conceal the clear proof, evidences, and the guidance which we have sent down, after we have made it clear for the people in the book, they are the ones cursed by Allah, and cursed by the curses. Except those who repent, and do righteous deeds, and openly declare the truth, I will accept their repentance. And I am the one who accepts repentance, the most merciful. Indeed, those who disbelieve, and die while they are disbelievers, it is they on whom is the curse of Allah, and of the angels, and of mankind combined. They will abide there under the curse in hell. Their punishment will neither be lightened, nor will they be reprieved. And your God is one God. There is none who has the right to be worshipped but He, the most gracious, the most merciful. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of night and day, and the ships which sail through the sea with that which is of use to mankind, and the rain which Allah sends down from the sky, and with it makes the earth alive after its death, and the living creatures of all kinds that He has scattered there, and in the veering of winds and clouds which are held between the sky and the earth, are indeed signs for people of understanding. And of mankind are some who take for worship others besides Allah, as rivals to Allah. They love them as they love Allah. But those who believe love Allah more than anything else. If only those who do wrong could see when they will see the torment that all power belongs to Allah, and that Allah is severe in punishment. When those who were followed disown and declare themselves innocent of those who followed them, and when they see the torment, then all their relations will be cut off from them. And those who followed will say, If only we had one more chance to return to the world, we would disown them as they have disowned us. Thus Allah will show them their deeds as regrets for them, and they will never get out of the fire. O mankind! Eat of that which is lawful and good on the earth, and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Indeed, he is to you an open enemy. Satan commands for you only what is evil and sinful, and that you should say against Allah what you do not know. When it is said to them, Follow what Allah has sent down, they say, No, we shall follow what we found our fathers following, even though their fathers did not understand anything and were not guided. And the example of those who disbelieve is as that of him who shouts to a flock of sheep that hears nothing but calls and cries. They are deaf, dumb, and blind, and so they do not understand. O oh, you who believe, eat of the lawful things that we have provided for you, and be grateful to Allah, if it is indeed He whom you worship. He has forbidden for you only the dead animals and blood, and the flesh of swine, and that which is slaughtered as a sacrifice for others than Allah. But if one is forced by necessity, without willful disobedience, and without transgressing due limits, then there is no sin on him. Truly, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Indeed, those who conceal what Allah has sent down of the book, and purchase a small gain with it, they swallow into their bellies nothing but fire. Allah will not speak to them on the day of resurrection, nor purify them, and theirs will be a painful torment. They are those who have purchased error for the price of guidance, 
and torment for the price of forgiveness. How bold they are for the evil deeds which will push them to the fire. That is because Allah has sent down the Quran in truth, and indeed those who dispute it as regards the book are far away in opposition. It is not piety that you turn your faces towards the east or west in prayer, but piety is the quality of one who believes in Allah, the last day, the angels, the book, the prophets, and gives his wealth, in spite of his love for it, to the kindred, to the orphans, to the poor, to the wayfarer, and to those who ask, and to set slaves free, performs prayer, and gives charity, and who fulfills his covenant when he makes it, and who is a patient one in extreme poverty and disease, and at a time of fighting during battle. Such are the people of the truth, and they are pious. O you who believe, the law of equality and punishment is prescribed for you in the case of murder, the free for the free, the slave for the slave, and the female for the female. But if the killer is forgiven by the brother or the relatives of the killed against blood money, then adhering to it with fairness, payment of the blood money to the heir should be made in fairness. This is an alleviation and a mercy from your Lord. So after this, whoever transgresses the limits and kills the killer after taking the blood money, he shall have a painful torment. And there is saving of life for you in the law of equality and punishment, O men of understanding, that you may become pious. It is prescribed for you when death approaches any of you, if he leaves wealth, that he makes a gift to parents and next of kin according to reasonable manners. This is a duty upon the pious. And whoever changes the gift after hearing of it, the sin shall be on those who make the change. Truly Allah is all hearer, all knower. But he who fears some unjust act or wrongdoing from a testator, and so makes peace between the parties concerned, there shall be no sin on him. Certainly Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. O you who believe, observing the fast is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may become pious. Fast for a fixed number of days. But if any of you is ill or on a journey, the same number should be made up from other days. As for those who fast with difficulty, they have a choice either to fast or to feed a poor person for every day. But whoever does good of his own accord, it is better for him, and it is better for you that you fast, if only you knew. The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed is a guidance for mankind and clear proof for the guidance and the criterion between right and wrong. So whoever of you cites the crescent on the first night of the month of Ramadan, he must observe the fasts that month. And whoever is ill or on a journey, the same number of days which one did not observe fasts, must be made up from other days. Allah intends for you ease, and He does not want to make things difficult for you. He wants that you complete the same number of days, and that you magnify Allah for having guided you, so that you may be grateful to Him. And when my slaves ask you, O Muhammad, concerning me, then answer them, that I am indeed near to them. I respond to the call of the supplicant when he calls on me, without any mediator or intercessor. So let them obey me and believe in me, so that they may be led aright. It is made lawful for you to have sexual relations with your wives on the night of the fasts. They are a cover for you, and you are the same for them. Allah knows that you used to deceive yourselves, so He turned to you and accepted your repentance and forgave you. So have sexual relations with them, and seek that which Allah has ordained for you of offspring. And eat and drink until the white thread of light of dawn appears to you distinct from the black thread of the darkness of night, and then complete your fast till the nightfall. And do not have sexual relations with your wives while you are in residence in the mosques. These are the limits set by Allah, so do not approach them. Thus does Allah make clear His proofs to mankind that they may become pious. And do not consume one another's property unjustly, nor give bribery to the rulers and judges that you may knowingly eat up a part of the property of others sinfully. They ask you, O Muhammad, about the new moons. Say, 
These are signs to mark fixed periods of time for mankind and for the pilgrimage. It is not piety that you enter houses from the back, but piety is for him who fears Allah. So enter houses through their proper doors, and fear Allah that you may be successful. And fight in the way of Allah those who fight you, but do not transgress the limits. Truly Allah does not like the transgressors. And kill them wherever you find them, and turn them out from where they have turned you out. Suffering is worse than killing. And do not fight with them at the sacred mosque, unless they first fight you there. But if they attack you, kill them. Such is the recompense of the disbelievers. But if they cease, then Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. And fight them, until there is no more suffering, and worship is for Allah alone. But if they cease, let there be no hostility, except against the oppressors. The sacred month, for the sacred month, and then for the prohibited things, there is the law of equality. So whoever transgresses the prohibition against you, you transgress likewise against him. And fear Allah, and know that Allah is with the pious. And spend in the cause of Allah, and do not throw yourselves into destruction, and do good. Truly, Allah loves the good doers. And perform properly the Hajj and Umrah for Allah. But if you are prevented, Sacrifice an animal such as you can afford, and do not shave your heads until the animal reaches the place of sacrifice. And whosoever of you is ill, or has an ailment in his scalp, he must pay a ransom of either observing fasts of three days, or giving charity, or offering sacrifice. Then, if you are in safety, and whoever performs the Umrah in the months of Hajj, before performing the Hajj he must slaughter an animal such as he can afford. But, if he cannot afford it, he should observe fasts for three days during the Hajj, and seven days after his return to home, making ten days in all. This is for him whose family is not present at the sacred mosque. And fear Allah much, and know that Allah is severe in punishment. The Hajj pilgrimage is in the well-known months. So whoever intends to perform Hajj there by assuming ihram, he should not have sexual relations with his wife, nor commit sin, nor dispute unjustly during the Hajj. And whatever good you do, be sure Allah knows it, and take a provision with you for the journey, but the best provision is righteousness. So fear me, O men of understanding. There is no sin on you if you seek the bounty of your Lord during pilgrimage by trading. Then, when you leave Arafat, remember Allah by glorifying His praises at the sacred monument and remember him as he has guided you, and indeed you were before of those who were astray. Then depart from the place where all the people depart, and ask Allah for his forgiveness. Truly, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. So when you have accomplished your rights, remember Allah as you used to remember your forefathers, but with far more remembrance. But of mankind there are some who say, our Lord, give us your bounties in this world, and for such there will be no portion in the hereafter. And of them there are some who say, Our Lord, give us in this world that which is good, and in the hereafter that which is good, and save us from the torment of the fire. For them there will be allotted a share for what they have earned, and Allah is swift at reckoning. And remember Allah during the appointed days. But whoever hastens to leave in two days, there is no sin on him, and whoever stays on, there is no sin on him, if his aim is to do good and obey Allah and fear him. And know that you will surely be gathered to him. And of mankind there is he whose speech may please you, O Muhammad, in this worldly life, and he calls Allah to witness to that which is in his heart, yet he is the most quarrelsome of the opponents. And when he turns away from you, his effort in the land is to make mischief, and to destroy the crops and the cattle, and Allah does not like mischief. And when it is said to him, Fear Allah, he is led by arrogance to more crimes. So hell is enough for him, and worst indeed is that place to rest. And of mankind is he who would sell himself, seeking the pleasure of Allah, and Allah is full of kindness to his slaves. 
O you who believe, enter perfectly in Islam, and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Indeed, he is to you a plain enemy. Then, if you slide back after the clear signs have come to you, then know that Allah is almighty, all-wise. Do they then wait for anything other than that Allah should come to them in the shadows of the clouds and the angels? Then the case would already be judged, and to Allah return all matters for decision. Ask the children of Israel how many clear proofs we gave them, and whoever changes Allah's favor after it had come to him, then surely Allah is severe in punishment. Beautified is the life of this world for those who disbelieve, and they mock of those who believe. But those who obey Allah's orders and keep away from what He has forbidden will be above them on the day of resurrection. And Allah gives of His bounty on the day of resurrection to whom He wills without limit. Mankind was one nation, and Allah sent prophets with glad tidings and warnings, and with them He sent the Scripture in truth to judge between a people in matters in which they differed. And only those to whom the Scripture was given differed concerning it after clear proofs had come to them through hatred one to another. Then Allah, by His leave, guided those who believed to the truth of that in which they differed. And Allah guides whom He wills to a straight path. Or do you think that you will enter paradise without such trials as came to those who passed away before you? They were afflicted with severe poverty and ailments, and were so shaken that even the messenger and those who believed along with him said, When will the help of Allah come? Yes, certainly the help of Allah is near. They ask you, O Muhammad, what they should spend. Say, Whatever you spend of good must be for your parents and kindred, and the orphans and the poor and the wayfarers. And whatever you do of good deeds, truly, Allah knows them well. Fighting in Allah's cause is ordained for you Muslims, even though you dislike it. And it may be that you dislike a thing which is good for you, and that you like a thing which is bad for you. Allah knows, but you do not know. They ask you concerning fighting in the sacred months, say, Fighting then is a great transgression. But a greater transgression with Allah is to prevent mankind from following the way of Allah, to disbelieve in Him, to prevent access to the sacred mosque in Mecca, and to drive out its inhabitants. And suffering is worse than killing. They will never cease fighting you until they turn you back from your religion if they can. And whoever of you turns back from his religion and dies as a disbeliever, then his deeds will be lost in this life and in the hereafter, and they will be the dwellers of the fire, they will abide there for ever. Indeed, those who have believed, and those who have emigrated for Allah's religion, and have striven hard in the way of Allah, they all hope for Allah's mercy, and Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. They ask you, O Muhammad, concerning alcoholic drink and gambling, say, in them is a great sin, and some benefit for men, but the sin is greater than their benefits. And they ask you what they ought to spend. Say, that which is beyond your needs. Thus Allah makes clear to you His laws, in order that you may give thought. On this worldly life, and in the hereafter, they ask you concerning orphans. Say, the best thing is to work honestly in their property. And if you mix your affairs with theirs, then they are your brothers. And Allah knows him who means mischief from him who means good. And if Allah had wished, he could have put you into difficulties. Truly, Allah is almighty, all-wise. And do not marry unbelieving pagan women until they believe and worship Allah alone. And indeed, a slave woman who believes is better than a free idolatress, even though she pleases you. And do not give your daughters in marriage to the idolaters until they believe in Allah alone. And indeed, a believing slave is better than a free idolater, even though he pleases you. These idolaters invite you to the fire, but Allah invites you to paradise and forgiveness by His leave, and makes His proofs clear to mankind, so that they may remember. They ask you concerning menstruation. Say, It is an impure thing. Therefore, keep away from women during their menses, and do not go to them until they are purified. 
and when they have purified themselves, then go to them as Allah has ordained for you. Truly, Allah loves those who turn to Him in repentance, and loves those who purify themselves. Your wives are a tilth for you, so go to your tilth when or how you will, and send good deeds before you for your own selves. And fear Allah, and know that you are to meet Him in the hereafter, and give good tidings to the believers. And do not make Allah's name an excuse in your oaths against your doing good, and acting piously, and making peace among mankind. And Allah is all hearer, all knower. Allah will not call you to account for that which is unintentional in your oaths, but He will call you to account for that which your hearts have earned. Allah is oft forgiving, most forbearing. Those who take an oath not to have sexual relation with their wives must wait four months, then... If they return, indeed Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. And if they decide upon divorce, then Allah is the all-hearer, all-knower. And divorced women shall wait for three menstrual periods, and it is not lawful for them to conceal what Allah has created in their wombs, if they believe in Allah in the last day. And their husbands have the better right to take them back in that prescribed time, if they wish for reconciliation. And women have rights similar to those of their husbands over them to what is reasonable. But men have a degree of responsibility over them. And Allah is almighty, all wise. The divorce is permissible twice. After that, either you retain her on reasonable terms, or release her with kindness. And it is not lawful for you men to take back from your wives any of your bridal money which you have given them except when both parties fear that they would be unable to keep the limits ordained by Allah. Then if you fear that they would not be able to keep the limits ordained by Allah, then there is no sin on either of them if she gives back for her divorce. These are the limits ordained by Allah, so do not transgress them. And whoever transgresses the limits ordained by Allah, then such are the wrongdoers. And if he has divorced her for the third time, then she is not lawful to him afterwards until she has married another man. Then, if the other husband divorces her, it is no sin on both of them that they reunite, provided they feel that they can keep the limits ordained by Allah. These are the limits of Allah, which He makes plain for the people who have knowledge. And when you have divorced women, and they have fulfilled the term of their prescribed period, either take them back on a reasonable basis, or set them free on a reasonable basis. But do not take them back to hurt them. And whoever does that, then he has wronged himself. And do not treat the laws of Allah as a jest, but remember Allah's favors on you, and that which He has sent down to you of the book and knowledge, whereby He instructs you. And fear Allah, and know that Allah is all aware of everything." And when you have divorced women, and they have fulfilled the term of their prescribed time, do not prevent them from marrying their former husbands, if they mutually agree on a reasonable basis. This instruction is an admonition for him among you who believes in Allah in the last day. That is more virtuous and purer for you. Allah knows, and you do not know. The mother shall suckle their children for two whole years for those who desire to complete the term of suckling. But the father of the child shall bear the cost of the mother's food and clothing on a reasonable basis. No person shall have a burden laid on him greater than he can bear. No mother shall be treated unfairly on account of her child, nor a father on account of his child. And on the father's heir is incumbent the like of that which was incumbent on the father. If they both decide on weaning by mutual consent, and after due consultation, there is no sin on them. And if you decide on a foster suckling mother for your children, there is no sin on you, provided you pay the mother what you agreed to give her on a reasonable basis. And fear Allah, and know that Allah is all seer of what you do. And those of you who die and leave wives behind them, the wives shall wait as regards their marriage for four months and ten days. Then, when they have fulfilled their term, there is no sin on you if the wives dispose of themselves in a just and honorable manner. And Allah is well acquainted with what you do. And there is no sin on you if you make a hint of betrothal or conceal it in yourself. 
Allah knows that you will remember them. But do not make a promise of contract with them in secret, unless you speak an honorable saying according to the Islamic law. And do not consummate the marriage until the term prescribed is fulfilled. And know that Allah knows what is in your minds, so fear Him. And know that Allah is oft forgiving, most forbearing. There is no sin on you if you divorce women, while yet you have not touched them, nor appointed to them their bridal money. But bestow on them a suitable gift, the rich according to his means, and the poor according to his means. A gift of a reasonable amount is a duty on the doers of good. And if you divorce them before you have touched them, and you have appointed to give them the bridal money, then pay half of it, unless the woman agrees to forego it, or the husband, in whose hands is the marriage tie, agrees to forego it, and gives her the full appointed bridal money. And to forego and give is nearer to piety. And do not forget kindness between yourselves. Truly Allah is all-seer of what you do. Strictly guard the prayers, especially the middle prayer, and stand before Allah with obedience. And if you fear an enemy, perform prayer on foot or while riding. And when you are in safety, offer the prayer in the manner he has taught you, which you did not know before. And those of you who die and leave behind wives should bequeath for their wives a year's maintenance and residence without turning them out. But if they leave, there is no sin on you for that which they do of themselves, provided it is honorable. And Allah is almighty, all wise. And for divorced women, maintenance should be provided on a reasonable scale. This is a duty on the pious. Thus, Allah makes clear His laws to you, in order that you may understand. Did you, O Muhammad, not think of those who went forth from their homes in thousands, fearing death? Allah said to them, Die! And then He restored them to life. Truly, Allah is full of bounty to mankind, but most men are thankless. Fight in the way of Allah, and know that Allah is all hearer, all knower. Who is he that will lend to Allah a goodly loan, so that he may multiply it to him many times over? And it is Allah that decreases or increases your provisions, and to him you shall return. Have you not thought about the group of the children of Israel after Moses, when they said to a prophet of theirs, Appoint for us a king, and we will fight in Allah's way? He said, Would you then refrain from fighting, if fighting was prescribed for you? They said, Why would we not fight in Allah's way, when we have been driven out of our homes, and our children have been taken as captives? But when fighting was ordered for them, they turned away, all except a few of them. And Allah is all aware of the wrongdoers. And their prophet Samuel said to them, Indeed, Allah has appointed Saul as a king over you. They said, how can he be a king over us, when we are better fitted than him for the kingdom, and he has not been given enough wealth? He said, Indeed, Allah has chosen him above you, and has increased him abundantly in knowledge and stature. And Allah grants his kingdom to whom he wills. And Allah is all-sufficient for his creatures' needs, all-knower. And their prophet Samuel said to them, Indeed, the sign of his kingdom is that there shall come to you a wooden box, in which is peace and reassurance from your Lord, and a remnant of that which Moses and Aaron left behind, carried by the angels. Indeed, in this is a sign for you, if you are indeed believers. Then when Saul set out with the army, he said, Indeed, Allah will try you by a river. So whoever drinks from it, he is not of me, and whoever does not taste of it, he is of me, except him who takes from it in the hollow of his hand. Yet they drank from it all except a few of them. So when he had crossed the river, he and those who believed with him, they said, We have no power this day against Goliath and his hosts. But those who knew with certainty that they were to meet their Lord said, How often a small group has overcome a mighty host by Allah's leave! and Allah is with the patient ones. And when they advanced to meet Goliath and his forces, they said, Our Lord, pour forth on us patience, and make us victorious over the disbelieving people. So they routed them by Allah's leave, and David killed Goliath, 
and Allah gave David the kingdom and prophethood, and taught him of that which he willed. And if Allah did not check one set of people by means of another, the earth would indeed be full of mischief. But Allah is full of bounty to the worlds. These are the verses of Allah. We recite them to you, O Muhammad, in truth, and surely you are one of the messengers of Allah. Those messengers, we preferred some to others. To some of them Allah spoke directly, others He raised to degrees of honor. And to Jesus, the son of Mary, we gave clear proofs and evidences, and supported him with Gabriel. If Allah had willed, succeeding generations would not have fought against each other, after clear verses of Allah had come to them. But they differed. Some of them believed, and others disbelieved. If Allah had willed, they would not have fought against one another, but Allah does what He wills. O oh, you who believe! Spend of that with which we have provided for you, before a day comes when there will be no bargaining, nor friendship, nor intercession. And it is the disbelievers who are the wrongdoers. Allah, there is no God but He, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes Him. To Him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. Who can intercede with him except with his permission? He knows whatever happens to them in this world, and what will happen to them in the hereafter. And they will never encompass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills. His footstool extends over the heavens and the earth, and he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them, and he is the Most High, the Most Great. There is no compulsion in religion. Indeed, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Whoever disbelieves in false gods and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. And Allah is all hearer, all knower. Allah is a guardian of those who believe. He brings them out from darkness into light. But as for those who disbelieve, their helpers are false leaders. They bring them out from light into darkness. Those are the dwellers of the fire, and they will abide there for ever. Have you not looked at him who disputed with Abraham about his Lord, because Allah had given him the kingdom? When Abraham said to him, My Lord Allah is he who gives life and causes death, he said, I give life and cause death. Abraham said, Indeed, Allah causes the sun to rise from the east, so then cause it to rise from the west. And the disbeliever was utterly defeated. Allah does not guide the people who are wrongdoers. Or like the one who passed by a town, and it had tumbled over its roofs, he said, Oh, how will Allah ever bring it to life after its death? So Allah caused him to die for a hundred years, then raised him up again. He said, how long did you tarry? The man said, Perhaps I tarried for a day or part of a day. He said, No, you tarried for a hundred years. Look at your food and your drink. They show no change. And look at your donkey. And thus we have made of you a sign for the people. Look at the bones, how we bring them together and clothe them with flesh. When this was clearly shown to him, he said, I know now that Allah is able to do all things. And remember when Abraham said, My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. Allah said, Do you not believe? He, Abraham, said, Yes, I believe, but so that my heart may be at ease. He said, Take four birds, then cause them to incline toward you, then cut them into pieces, and then put a portion of them on every hill, and call them they will come to you in haste, and know that Allah is almighty, all-wise. The likeness of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is as the likeness of a grain of corn. It grows seven ears, and each ear has a hundred grains. Allah gives manifold increase to whom He pleases, and Allah is all-sufficient for His creatures' needs, all-knower. Those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah, and do not follow up their gifts with reminders of their generosity or with injury, their reward is with their Lord, 
On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Kind words and the forgiving of faults are better than charity followed by injury. And Allah is free of all wants, and He is most forbearing. O you who believe, do not render in vain your charity by reminders of your generosity or by injury, like him who spends his wealth to be seen of men and does not believe in Allah nor in the last day. His likeness is the likeness of a smooth rock on which is a little dust. On it falls heavy rain which leaves it bare. They are not able to do anything with what they have earned, and Allah does not guide the disbelieving people. And the likeness of those who spend their wealth seeking Allah's pleasure, while they themselves are sure and certain that Allah will reward them, is the likeness of a garden on a height. Heavy rain falls on it, and it doubles its yield of harvest. But if it does not receive heavy rain, light rain suffices it. Allah is all-seer of what you do. Would any of you wish to have a garden with date palms and vines, with rivers flowing underneath, and all kinds of fruit for him there, while he is stricken with old age and his children are weak? Then it is struck with a fiery whirlwind so that it is burnt. Thus does Allah make clear his proofs, evidences, and verses to you, that you may give thought. O you who believe, spend of the good things which you have legally earned, and of that which we have produced from the earth for you. And do not aim at that which is bad to spend from, though you would not accept it, even if you closed your eyes and tolerate it. Know that Allah is free of all wants and worthy of all praise. Satan threatens you with poverty and orders you to commit evil deeds, whereas Allah promises you forgiveness from himself and bounty, and Allah is all-sufficient for his creatures' needs, all-knower. He grants knowledge to whom he pleases, and he to whom knowledge is granted is indeed granted abundant good. But none remember except men of understanding. And whatever you spend, or whatever vow you make, be sure Allah knows it all. And for the wrongdoers there are no helpers. If you disclose your charity, it is well. But if you conceal it and give it to the poor, that is better for you. Allah will forgive you some of your sins, and Allah is well acquainted with what you do. Not upon you, Muhammad, is their guidance, but Allah guides whom He wills. And whatever you spend in good, it is for yourselves, when you spend for nothing except seeking Allah's countenance. And whatever you spend in good, it will be repaid to you in full, and you shall not be wronged. Charity is for the poor, who in Allah's cause are restricted from travel and cannot move about in the land for trade or work. The one who does not know them thinks that they are rich because of their modesty. You may know them by their mark. They do not beg of people at all. And whatever you spend in good, surely Allah knows it well. Those who spend their wealth in Allah's cause by night and day, in secret and in public, they shall have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Those who eat usury will not stand on the day of resurrection except like the standing of a person beaten by Satan leading him to insanity. That is because they say, Trading is only like usury, whereas Allah has permitted trading and forbidden usury. So, Whoever receives an admonition from his Lord and stops consuming usury shall not be punished for the past. His case is for Allah to judge. But whoever returns to usury, such are the dwellers of the fire, they will abide there. Allah will destroy usury and give increase to charity. And Allah does not like the disbelievers and sinners. Truly those who believe, and do deeds of righteousness, and perform prayer, and give charity, they will have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. O you who believe, be afraid of Allah, and give up what remains from usury due to you from now onwards, if you are really believers. And if you do not do it, then take notice of war from Allah and His Messenger. But if you repent, you shall have your capital sums. Do not deal unjustly by asking for more than your capital sums, and you shall not be dealt with unjustly by receiving less than your capital sums.
and if the debtor is in a hard time, then grant him time till it is easy for him to repay. But if you remit it by way of charity, that is better for you if you only knew. And be afraid of the day when you shall be brought back to Allah. Then every person shall be paid of what he earned, and they shall not be dealt with unjustly. O you who believe, when you contract a debt for a fixed period, write it down. Let a scribe write it down in justice between you. Do not let the scribe refuse to write as Allah has taught him. Let him write. Let the debtor who incurs the liability dictate, and he must fear Allah, his Lord, and not diminish anything of what he owes. But if the debtor is of poor understanding, or weak, or is unable to dictate himself, then let his guardian dictate in justice, and get two witnesses out of your own men. And if there are no two men available, then a man and two women, such as you agree for witnesses, so that if one of the two women errs, the other can remind her. And the witnesses should not refuse when they are called for evidence. You should not become weary to write your contract, whether it be small or big, for its fixed term. That is more just with Allah, more solid as evidence, and more convenient to prevent doubts among yourselves. Save when it is a present trade, which you carry out on the spot among yourselves, then there is no sin on you if you do not write it down. But take witnesses whenever you make a commercial contract. Let neither scribe nor witness suffer any harm. But if you do such harm, it would be wickedness in you. So be afraid of Allah, and Allah teaches you, and Allah is the all-knower of each and everything. And if you are on a journey and cannot find a scribe, then let there be a pledge taken. Then, if one of you entrusts the other, let the one who is entrusted discharge his trust faithfully, and let him be afraid of Allah his Lord. And do not conceal the evidence, for he who hides it, surely his heart is sinful, and Allah is all-knower of what you do. To Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is on the earth. And whether you reveal what is in your own souls or conceal it, Allah will call you to account for it. Then he forgives whom he wills and punishes whom he wills, and Allah is able to do all things. The messenger believes in what has been sent down to him from his Lord, and so do the believers. Each one believes in Allah, his angels, his books, and his messengers. They say, We make no distinction between one another of his messengers. And they say, We hear and we obey. We seek your forgiveness, our Lord, and to you is the return of all. Allah does not burden a person beyond his scope. He gets reward for that good which he has earned, and he is punished for that evil which he has earned. Our Lord, do not punish us if we forget or fall into error. Our Lord, do not lay on us a burden like that which you laid on those before us. Our Lord, do not place on us a burden greater than we have strength to bear. Pardon us and grant us forgiveness. Have mercy on us. You are our protector, and give us victory over the disbelieving people.